It's the grandson of Right Thought. Welcome to the School of Marvelous Light this morning, a little flock of laters. It's bright and early, and it's quite windy, so forgive me if there's parts of this message that might be winded out. <laughs> we were cut off on the last message because my device died, and we were reading from the book of Isaiah chapter 1, so go back to the book of Isaiah chapter 1, and we're going to start where we left off and finish out this message. You ever been to a restaurant and they were bringing out your order and they started, you, you went, you, your reservation was for 8 p.m. at the restaurant. They started bringing your order out at 9 and you ate and ate and ate until you were full. You went home, went to sleep, got up the next morning and went back to the restaurant and they're still bringing the food from the meal from last night. They're still bringing it to you like here. Here's the rest of that. That meal you ordered, it, it wasn't finished last night. I know you were full, but it wasn't finished. Well, that's the same thing that happened here, little flock. Abba was like, they got enough grandson for now. Let them percolate on that for a minute. <laughs> Let them digest some of that because there's more coming behind it. You see, little flock? And so it is with this message. There's a whole lot more that needs to be covered concerning the topics that we were talking about. The children of Israel, who their God is, who their head is, where their land is. Isaiah chapter one tells you that Israel doesn't know these things, nor does he consider that he's not in his homeland. He doesn't consider it. And that's why you remember I was using the Negroes as my example. Everyone knows the Negroes were brought here by force and enslaved. Everyone knows that. But yet they don't know why it happened. Well, Isaiah is telling you why. You see, they're in a strange land, held captive, and yet they don't even consider where they're originally from. You see it? So they need someone to tell them. That's what Yahushua came to do. To bring them back home to the Father. The Father it means your head. Where you, where you learn who you, who you are so that you can be who you are. Or as we say in this world, a man needs to teach a boy how to be a man. The woman, though she may try as hard as she possibly can, cannot raise a boy to be a man. There are certain things about being a man and experiences that a man has that a woman never understands, never will understand. Just like there are certain things a woman can teach a daughter that a father could never teach. And this is why it's best that the mother and the father raise the children as though they are one being. You see, that's the way Abba would have it. Leave your father and your mother, cleave unto your wife, and you too become one new flesh. See it? One new person. That's male and female, the way he created them in the beginning. You see it? Well, that's returning to the spiritual mind because there is no male or female in the spiritual mind. The spirit is not a flesh and blood body. Therefore, there isn't any male or female in the spirit. So if you were to return back to your true land where there is no male or female, where there is no, no uh, flesh involved in what you're doing, but only the spirit, as Yahushua said, the true worshipers worship the father in spirit and in truth. So as we discussed on our last video, what is the opposite of worshiping the Father in spirit and in truth? If you seek to worship the Father, what is the opposite of spirit and truth? Watch how simple this is going to be to come to this conclusion. Obviously, it means in flesh and in lies. So there are two ways. I told you there are only two worlds. Have I not told you from the last video? There's the carnal mind and the spiritual mind. The carnal mind is the flesh. The flesh profiteth nothing, but the spirit profit with all. So then what do you think you, what mind do you think you need to use? The flesh mind doesn't profit you to use it. So if you use it to interpret God's word, it doesn't profit you to do it. Look what a grandson keep on telling you guys. Is it accurate? Isn't it? Now who's feeding me this, this accurate information concerning the confusion that men have? Who's feeding this to me to say it? The devil is? Beelzebub is? Uh, I say thee nay. Only the spirit minds spiritual things. 
but the flesh minds fleshly things. So those two worlds are having a war waged. Can't you see it? Esau and Jacob. Now one has a perpetual hatred for the other. Out of those two minds, which one hates the other? The carnal mind has a perpetual hatred for his twin brother, the spiritual mind. That's what you read in the Bible. And because of that, Abba will destroy the carnal mind and all those who reside in it. That's what I'm trying to prevent for you. If you're caught up in anything else, then you will miss what the grandson is telling you. If you're caught up in, in, in race, you'll miss it. If you're caught up in landmass, you will miss it because the flesh profits you nothing. You must enter into the spirit so that you can worship the father in spirit, which is the true way to worship him. But there's been lies, people trying to worship him in lies. And the people that worship him in flesh and in lies teach others to. Those are called Sadducees, Pharisees, scribes. They worship him in flesh and in lies, and they teach others to do so. And that's why Yahushua said, you don't enter into the spiritual mind. You're not. And you're preventing others by teaching them that they need to do what you're doing. La, do, 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 la, la, la. That's why he said, don't do what they do. Isn't that what he said? And then he gave you examples of what they do to prove to you that they worship God. They, for a pretense, make long prayers, standing in the synagogue, standing on the street corners. Look at all of these people you see standing on the street corners, like the Israelite camps that think they're serving God, but they are hard hearted as hell, aren't they? They stand there on the corner throwing stones at all the passersby. Sounds like the Pharisees and Sadducees to me. And those are they who have not entered into the spiritual mind as to how to worship God. They believe that God is impressed at how many hours they've spent on the corner. They think that God is impressed that they gave a message standing outside while it was snowing. They think that God is impressed by that. But the flesh profiteth you nothing. It doesn't actually profit. There's no gain in it. That's why it's vain glory. It's vain. Men are impressed. Abba is not. You see it? He's more concerned with the station of your heart, the internal state of your being, your motivation for why you do what you do. And if it's a pure motivation and you're in error, then he will correct you and bring you into truth. But by burning off all of the errors that you have and that burning off may hurt you, it may seem like it's not good what's happening to you, but ultimately it's going to purge you, which we were reading yesterday and we're going to touch upon it here today. Your dross needs to be purged out of you so that you're pure. Dross means all the impurities. Remember he said, I will remove your tin. Tin. Y'all know what tin is, like a tin can, right? So if you have a piece of silver and you have some tin inside of that silver, then don't you want to remove it so that you can have pure silver? That's what I was going to do with you guys who say that you serve him. He's going to purge all of them and make them white. That's what he said. That's why I'm called the branch. Abba uses a branch to purify his people. Search the scriptures and see what Moses was sprinkling the people with. It was a branch of a hyssop and he dipped it in blood and sprinkled the people. Do you see it? That means purge them and consecrated them as a virgin bride for God like Yahusha did because their high priest, that's what he does. He purges the people and makes them acceptable to God. So you see why God says in the last days he will send his servant whose name is the branch. That means a purifier. And that's why it says when he comes, who can withstand him? Why do you think I talk the way that I talk? I know nobody can withstand me because I know my rank and position in the Lord's army. I know my position. He's revealed to me what it is. So then by faith, I accept that and I walk in it as though it's true. And then he confirms it to me by nobody being able to tangle with me. It's just that simple. And a lot of people are offended when I explain that or talk to you that way. But I don't care that you're offended. What I'm concerned with is that my people see that and no longer get scared and are, and are now emboldened by my boldness. Why do y'all think that's strange if that's the way David introduces himself to his people? His people can't see him. He is the king of his nation, though he is out there in the field with some sheep, just like the grandson always does. Y'all didn't read about Abel? 
He's going to be out there with some sheep hidden from the people. His own father doesn't even know he's the one. His own brothers don't even know that he's the one. Y'all must not have read the Bible or something. But he proved that he was the one when he slayed their greatest fear, which was the carnal mind. That's what Goliath had had over them. Let's prove it, little flock. What do you think caused the Israelites to become afraid when they saw Goliath? Because they judged him by his outward appearance. And I dare any of you to say that that's not true. They judged Goliath by the fact that he was tall as hell, by the fact that he was big as hell, by the fact that he was stanking as hell, by the fact that he was ugly as hell. And they said, this nigga will kill every last one of us if given the chance. So we're just going to stay here and cower in fear. But a new mind entered into the battlefield named Dawood, which means my beloved one, came into the battlefield and said, who is this stinking ass, 12 sandwich eating ass, uncircumcised, unclean ass Philistine standing there talking shit to God's people? Who that is? Y'all didn't read that or something? So remember, nobody knows who David is. Nobody knows that he's uh, the anointed king of Israel. Nobody knows nor gives a damn because they consider him to be some insignificant peon. Look at how they treated him when he came and asked about Goliath. He actually only came to give his brothers who were on the battlefield food. His father sent David to go give his brothers food. He didn't send David to go fight. So that proves that David wasn't even in the damn war. He wasn't even on the battlefront. He wasn't even in the military. Because men reject God's servant. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. I'm proving it because when Samuel chose David, that's where we got this revelation of how God judges. Right then, he says, Samuel, you think it's Eliab. Eliab is David's older brother. He's the firstborn. And, Saul, and Samuel thought that was the anointed one. And God says, I have rejected him. You're looking at his outward appearance to judge him. I don't judge that way, but I judge the heart and the reins. So I want David. Now, is that what happened or is that what happened, guys? So then here it is what the grandson is telling you is that when God chooses, he chooses you based on your heart and your reins, not on anything you do without outward appearance. And he keeps showing it to you guys. He keeps telling it to you guys. And the grandson keeps proving it to you guys. But you guys think it's about something else that you can do outwardly to still impress God. You can't. You can't. The body is dead because of sin. So if the body is dead because it errors when it does things, when will it ever do the right thing? If it's dead. Y'all keep thinking y'all can enter the kingdom as a caterpillar. You can't. You have to enter in as a butterfly. And when you enter in as a butterfly, you don't get to the gate as a butterfly and then say, hold on, let me transform back into a caterpillar again so that I can come in. It doesn't work that way. Your caterpillar state is dead. It ain't coming back. Y'all can't hear that or something? So as we see, David come forth to the battlefield. And remember, he's unknown. Nobody knows. His own people don't even know. His own dad didn't even bring him in to meet Samuel. That should tell you that nobody considered him to be anything worth the damn. But he, Abba did. And so Abba chose him and he killed Goliath right in front of the Israelites. Now, when he killed Goliath, what happened to the Israelites? Because the scripture tells you what happened to them. Their state of being changed because of their king and his boldness. Stop fucking with the grandson for I trample your ass as I'm coming through. See how I'm talking? But y'all are offended as if this isn't the end of the world. It's the end of the world, nigga. That's why I'm talking the way that I'm talking and I'm trampling in the wine press without a care of how you might feel about it. He told me don't spare. So when I go to war, nigga, I don't spare nobody, nigga. I'm cutting everybody's shit off unless you're on my team. And even if you're on my team, I'm gonna run up to you with my hand on your fucking neck and say, uh, who do you say Yahusha is? What do you say about Yahusha? I'm testing the shit out your spirit. Do you say that he co is come in the flesh? I had one brother one time came up to me and was like, man, what's going on? I was in a debate with an, another unbeliever. And I'm slicing and dicing him. And then this other guy approached me and was like, hey, what's going on here practically? He was like, what's going on here? And I'm like, I'm just slicing and dicing this guy. Hey, do you want to get sliced? Uh, what do you say about Yahushua? Do you say that he has come in the flesh? And the guy laughed and he said, brother, I already know why you're asking that. And yes, of course I believe that. And I already know why you're asking it. All right then, guys. 
I'm just using that as an example to prove my point about to prove what I was telling you about how I am. I drew the sword on his throat. And when he confessed, I put it back in its sheath and then shook his hand and said, hey, brother. Don't get mad at me for putting my shit up on your throat in a land of deception. I won't slice unless I know for a fact that you ain't got no seal on you. What did I say in my song? I never kill him. I just looked to see if Abba didn't seal him. <laughs> he been in terror. Abba ain't healed him. <laughs> we do not care if he got him a billion. <laughs> we don't give a damn about what you got. We don't care about who you are. We're just looking to see if you got that seal of my father in your forehead. And if you don't have it, then guess what's going to happen to you? <clears throat> You're D-E-A-D. That's just the way that that goes. So now we're going to get into the, the scriptures here and continue with the where we left off. So go back to Isaiah chapter 1, and we'll start at verse 24. Therefore saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts, armies, the mighty one of Israel, Ah, I will ease of mine adversaries and avenge me of mine enemies. Y'all hear that? And I will turn my hand upon thee, and purely purge away thy dross. See, like we were saying in the last message. He's going to purify you. See? And take away thy tin, the things that are in you that need to be removed. See? And I will restore thy judges as at the first, and thy counselors as at the beginning. Afterward, you shall be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Like I told you, the new Jerusalem is a body. Keep telling you guys that's fit for a thought. The new body that's meant for the new thought that exists. Can you understand this? Once you're spiritually minded, the flesh body can no longer hold you. So you have to put off this corruption and put on a new body, which is in corruption that matches the new land for you. That's your land. The new Jerusalem is a new body. But you have to be spiritually minded to enter into the new body that has a spiritual mind leading it. There is an old body that has a flesh of mine leading it. Haven't you experienced that body? Whoa, wretched man that I am. Who shall save me from this body of death? I don't know if y'all can't understand it. All right. Zion, see, right thought, shall be redeemed with judgment and her converts with righteousness. Those who think right are now converted into those who dwell at Zion. I told you that's where I'm from. I'm from the city of right thinking. So when I come, I'm going to teach you how to enter into that city. That city of right thinking is Zion. The city of right feeling is Jerusalem. And these are one within you. They're called your mind and your heart. You have to have a new mind and a new heart to receive a new body that matches the new heart and the new mind. <laughs> there was a mind and a heart designed for your flesh body. And that's the old world that's going away and passing away. So you need to enter into the ark so that you can enter into the new. Just like Noah had to go into an ark so that he could be brought into the new earth fashioned for him. The husbandmen who planted a vineyard and got some grapes and made some wine after the fact. Proving he's a husbandman to the earth. He became inheritor of the faith that is by righteousness, guys. That's what it says. He inherited it. Told you. Don't let no man take your crown away. Your crown is your inheritance. Hmm. Gosh, golly. Grandson just be on fire. I tell you right now. And the destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners, carnally minded people, shall be together. And they that forsake I am shall be consumed. Those who forsake the spiritual mind will be consumed in the flesh. Isn't it easy to be understood, little flock of laters? For they shall be ashamed of the oaks which you have desired, and you shall be confounded for the gardens that you have chosen. See that? For you shall be as an oak whose leaf fadeth, and as a garden that hath no water. And the strong shall be as tow, and the maker of it as a spark, and they shall both burn together, and none shall quench them. Y'all remember we was reading that yesterday? Now go to the book of Acts, chapter 3. Well, before you go to the book of Acts, chapter 3, hold off there. Let's go somewhere else first and grab something real quick. Let's go to Luke 22. Let's get that first. Luke 22, chapter 22, verse 31. All right. Luke 22, 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you. The carnal mind wants you. 
See? Just like it wants you. That's why it's tempting you. See? It wants you. That he may sift you as wheat. That he may scatterbrain you. That's all it's going to do. It's create panic in your life and fear. Makes you scattered and double-minded and scared. That's what he wants to do. How do we know? Because he came right to him and said, Hey, don't you know that guy, Yahusha? I don't know him. He only said, I don't know him out of fear, guys. See? Out of doubt. I don't know who he is. He did it three times. And then he cried after. So it means regret, shame, fear came from the carnal mind. And look how it left him. Desolate crying because he rejected his own friend that he said he'd never reject. That's painful to you. To go against your word and not be able to keep your word. When you gave it with full confidence, you believed it when you said it. I'll never leave you. I'll always be there with you. I'll go to you all the way to the death. And then to sit there and say, I don't never know him. Well, then that means that the carnal mind took hold of you. That's why he kept saying it to Peter. Get behind me, Satan. He's always talking to Peter when he says that. Because Peter is faith. But the opposite of faith is doubt. So then Simon is doubt. And that's why he changed his name to Peter, which means a rock that doesn't shift and doesn't change and go back and forth. Isn't it easy to be understood? Watch this. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. See what I told you there yesterday. You have to be converted like Paul. When you get converted, you're a new man. Watch. Simon. Okay, I now call you Peter. And when you are converted and accept that new identity that was hidden in God that I have revealed to you that you are, then you will strengthen your brothers. Well, it's just like me. When I was living my mundane life, going around being called by my mundane name and every damn thing, that's who I thought I was. But I was much afraid. I was naive. I was scared. I was doubting all the time. I had all kinds of shame about shit. I thought I wasn't good enough. I thought I wasn't this enough. I thought I wasn't that enough. That's called scatterbrain, sifted like wheat. Satan gotcha. But then I was confronted on a road and converted and change it to a new creature, and he said, I now call you Isaiah Simachinakwake Mishnuka. And I know what that means. I know you don't know what that means, but I do. See how the scriptures are proven by saying, You shall receive a name that no man knoweth, but he who's given it. So I know what it means, and so I tell you guys what it means the grandson of right thought. You see that there, little flock? Do you see it? So now, if I revert back and become the old fearful man I once was, then I'm not converted. I have not accepted my truth. But as you can see, I do. And am I strong enough now to strengthen my brothers? Well, you guys are my brothers. You tell them, little flock, have I strengthened you at all? So then I must be converted. Do you see? Like I said, I am Strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. See, I told you guys this. I just explained it to you. Now watch. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. See, I know you think that's the way you're going to be, but you ain't. You ain't strong enough yet. You're going to break. See it? All right, then. But when your faith, which is the strong man of the house, is not broken or does not scatter or does not run away or not caught off guard, then your house, which is your body, cannot be spoiled or broken up. See? All right. Now we want to go back to Acts. Now that we know that when you're converted, strengthen your brothers. Now let's see what happens when Peter is converted. All right. Go to Acts. Let's see what we see. Verse 1, now Peter and John, that's faith and love. Understand that? Faith and love went up, up together into the temple, the body, at the hour of prayer, uh-huh, being the ninth hour. You see that there, little flock? And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, 
to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. So he was an invalid and he was sitting there asking for change. Like you see when you go into the store to be a guy, they're like, hey, brother, you got a dollar, man. You got a dollar. You see that there? That's what this man was doing. And when he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked in alms. Hey, brothers, y'all got a couple dollars y'all can spare? See? And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him, stop right there. That's a very important point right there. By faith, you will look at the poor man in his face. I hope you hear me. Because what is the natural carnal mind inclination? When a man comes up to you, he's clearly poor, struggling, and he's asking you for something. Hey, brother. Hey, brother. What's your natural inclination by the flesh? To walk away from him. To hide your face. That's why the Bible says, do not hide your face from the poor. Why would it say that if you ain't doing it with the carnal mind? You are. I know what the feeling is like. I've had it happen to me. I told you guys when I came out of the 40 and I was 120 pounds of skin and bones, damn near dead. I asked a man at a gas station, could you spare a dollar? After the 40, I was hungered. Shit. And I said, do you have a dollar so I can get something to eat? And he said, no. And he commenced to putting quarters into a car wash machine so he could wash his car. See? So uh, don't mess around with what I'm telling you. I know it. I've seen. Like I said in my song, I've seen it. You guys can tell me whatever you want to tell me. I know what I've seen in the hearts of men. I don't look outward appearance. I look in their hearts. You see that? Watch this. And Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John. So John looked at him. Faith and love is what causes you to look. See? Now watch. Look on us. And he said, look at us. And he gave heed unto them. So he looked at them, expecting to receive something. He's like, oh, I'm about to get something. See, now watch this. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none. So how much silver and gold did Peter have? The apostle of Christ. How much silver and gold did he have? None. So I don't have that. I don't have earthly riches. But what do I have? Let's see. But such as I have, give I thee. Same thing with the grandson of right thought. When you guys come here, I am literally opening a vault and I'm taking both of my hands and I'm reaching in, grabbing as much cash, dollars, green, uh, rings, gold, rubies and diamonds with my hands. And I'm just throwing them up into the air and whoever is wise will grab them. You guys don't know that's what I'm doing. And that's why your majority of people are not here because they don't have eyes to see true value. Like I told you, but if I was sitting here with an actual physical vault with gold, rubies, and money in it, and every video, I'm like, I'm just sitting here on this corner right here in Detroit, throwing this money up in the air. Whoever wants it can have it. How many people do you think would come to my fucking page? Do you think would come to my city and stand around me waiting to see what I'm going to do? How many do you think would come? All you niggas would come. You see how the carnal mind is enmity against God? It doesn't even know value, but it thinks that it does. Right then. So the same thing with Peter. Now let's see if what he gives the man is more valuable than silver and gold, even though the man wanted silver and gold. Let's see. But such as I have, I give thee. In the name of Yahushua HaMashiach of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Feet and ankle bones means you're able to stand on your own feet now. You're able to get for yourself what you need now. Because Yahushua is going to teach you the truth. See it? Watch. And he leaped, leaping up, stood and walked and entered in with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. So when you enter your body, with faith and love, you're going to enter with rejoicing. That makes you a Jew, like I told you that. Praising God when you enter into the body. That's what is acceptable to God. That is the sacrifice he accepts. Oh, man. So that's what they're doing in the temple, aren't they? Now, let's see how the overrighteous feel about what they have just seen. You coming and rejoicing when you walk in. Let's see how they feel about that. And all the people saw him walking and praising El, and they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate. They knew that man. 
of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. They were like, how the hell this happened to this guy? He's always been an invalid. How is he now walking on his own damn feet? How is he strengthened in this way? Well, let's see. And as the lame man, which was healed, held Peter and John, held. He holding on to him, y'all. Shit, faith and love. Shit, faith and love will heal you. Okay? Seek it by faith and you shall have it. See? That's why Peter and John are there. Mm, mm, mm. Listening. Keep listening. All the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's. The grandson's porch. See? That's why I'll be telling them, go ahead and get off my porch because I'm not coming outside. Because I'm in the temple and I'm not coming out of the temple. See how it's correlated? Uh-huh. See that there? Greatly wandering. So they're all standing on the porch, greatly wandering. Now watch this. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel. See, the same people read about in Isaiah. Why marvel ye at this? Why is this so shocking to you guys? Or why look ye so earnestly on us? Why y'all staring at us like we somebody? As though by our own power or holiness, we had made this man to walk. Stop! So the power that caused them to be able to do this mighty work, was it their own power or their own holiness? No. The Bible says you all go about to establish your own righteousness, and that ain't right to do. Just like Peter was proven. If you submit to the power of Christ, now you're winning. But if you go about to go by your own holiness or your own power, then you ain't going to be able to do nothing. The God of Abraham, see, the father, and Isaac, the son, and of Jacob, the grandson, see, the God of our fathers hath glorified his son, Yahusha, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. See, you Israelites, y'all rejected your own damn king that makes this kind of power possible. See? But you denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you. See? Y'all took a murderer instead of the righteous judge. So the world's not sick? The world isn't under the carnal mind? So there's brotherly love, which is Abel, and then there's brotherly hatred, which is Cain. This cannot be denied. There's brotherly love, which is Jacob, Israel, who fell down before his brother and said, I am your servant. And then there's bloody ass, killing ass, murdering ass Esau, who has a perpetual hatred, who says, I'm going to kill my brother. Does it change? So then the grandson's here now. And then you guys are all saying, watch out for the Antichrist. He could pop up at any moment. The Antichrist is the grandson on the wicked side. So then that means you're not seeing the grandson on the righteous side. And that's why this world is condemned. Because you're going to accept the wicked one, the murderer. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. So if the same one in the end was a murderer from the beginning, who was the first murderer? The wicked grandson. And who did he murder? The righteous grandson. So then when you read Revelation and you see a man child being born and then you see a red dragon waiting to him to murder as soon as he's born, then isn't that the same thing about Esau and Jacob and the same thing about Cain and Abel? Yes, it is. Because the man child I keep telling you guys about is Ben son or the son of the son or the third part of the plant like we just read. Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. If Yahushua is Isaac, then who's the Jacob that works that comes? Yahushua told you who he is. The spirit of truth that should remind you of everything I taught you. Yeah, that would be the grandson, like I keep telling you guys. But look at how many people call the grandson an antichrist. Look. Look how many people are warring against whether or not I'm really seriously, truly who I am or not. Look how that dilemma comes up when you're looking at me. Mm-hmm. That's because I'm not outwardly appearing righteous. So my twin brother will come before you outwardly appearing righteous and holy, and he'll win you guys over. And he'll win you guys over by his miracles that he does. See? See how it's going? Mm-hmm. Now continuing, watch this. But y'all got a murderer to be granted to you and kill the prince of life. See? Whom... 
El have raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name through faith, told you faith, guys, didn't I tell you that? Faith in his name have made this man strong. I told you that's who was standing there, faith. See? Yeah, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. See? And now, brethren, I wot not through ignorance you did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which El before has shown by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he have so fulfilled. Repent. So repent means come out of the carnal mind and enter back into the spiritual. So he's telling them to do that. Well, watch. Repent ye therefore and be what, little flock? So did we read in Isaiah that Zion and her converts will become righteous and they will be the ones saved? Who did I tell you I am? I'm the grandson of right thought, the branch of Jesse who was sent from Mount Zion to the carnal world to draw you all back and remind you of what you were taught by the king of the spiritual world. That's my job and that's my duty and that's what I do on a daily basis. So don't screw around with it saying that it ain't so because you can't. What you doing every day? Mm. All right. Watch this. And he shall send Yahushua HaMashiach, verse 20, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the time of restitution of all things, which El have spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets. So all the prophets have spoken about this. See, since the world began, since the world began, guys, for Moses truly said unto the fathers, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, see, of your people, like unto me, like me. Him shall you hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. You shall hear everything that he has to say to you, see? And it shall come to pass, not Moses, but the one who comes after. This is what I'm trying to tell the people today. You see how they heard Moses and they think it's sufficient. Then why did Moses tell you there will come another prophet that you must listen to? Who is that prophet that you must listen to outside of Moses? And if listening to Moses was sufficient, then why do you have to listen to a new prophet that I was going to rise up out of the brethren of Israel? Foot sweep got you tied up, hog tied, hanging there by a rope with an apple in your mouth and your butt ass naked, roasting over an open fire. <sighs> Boy, I love what I do. I do. I love my labor. That's why I do it with love. And it shall come to pass that uh, that every soul, watch this, every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed among the people. So Moses said, not if you listen to me. No, if you don't listen to that prophet that comes after me, then you will be destroyed. So guys, um, didn't Yahushua say all blasphemy and all words spoken against the son shall be forgiven? But those speaking against uh, the son of man, the blasphemy shall not be. That's what this is saying. If you don't listen to him, you'll die. So did I tell you guys where I'm sent from and who I'm sent from? See how I know my, my master and I know my master's crib, but Israel doth not know, like I said on the last video. So then how are they going to know? Somebody's got to tell them and remind them. Ain't that what I'm doing? I'm reminding you, you're not of a landmass on earth. You're of the spiritual mind within. And once you are connected to your spiritual mind and back in your land, living in there joyously, decorating and living and drinking and eating in your land of the spiritual mind, then the outside will manifest to match it. Because Yahushua said, if you clean the inside of the cup, then the outside shall be clean also. So then your experience that you experience on the outside will be exactly what you have always wanted for yourself. If you experience the feelings that you would always want for yourself within yourself first, but you can't think about that if you're bogged down all day with carnal things. You can't. So then Yahushua said, stop thinking about carnal things, didn't he? Take no thought for your life. It cancels out every carnal thing you can desire for yourself. So then what should you be thinking about? He told you the kingdom of heaven and that righteousness. That's what he said. So continuing. <clears throat> 
Watch this, y'all. So if you don't listen, you'll be destroyed. If you don't listen to that prophet, he said, you'll be destroyed. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. So they all talked about it, in case you guys didn't know that. You are the children of the prophets and of the covenant. Israel, he said, you men of Israel which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. So I'm a seed of Abraham. Now I want to ask you guys, the men that are blessed and the women that are blessed by my ministry, are all of you guys of the nation of Israel? No. See? But you're blessed by an Israelite, aren't you? Yeah, you are. Because if you bless Israel, you shall be blessed. But if you curse Israel, then what? Y'all know the rest. So you better get the blessing, the grandson of right thought, so you can get blessed. Because I'm willing to bless even if you don't bless me. So what do you think will happen if you do? Just out of curiosity, I stand for righteousness, justice, fairness, love, kindness, patience, long-suffering, tender mercies. And you guys are saying it would be wrong for me to be in an elevated state on the earth? Well, don't you want a man to lead you who has those qualities? Wow. Wow. Like David? Well, the people aren't going to put David up there. So God got to. And how God does is causing him to conquer all their fears right in front of them. And then they look at him and say, yeah, man, that's the king for sure. That's the grandson for your ass. He shall grow up unto David. See? Continuing. All right. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, we'll start at verse 19. What? I'm not saying what. That's what it says in the scriptures right there. Verse 19. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? which you have of L, God put it there, and you are not your own, for you are bought with a high price. Therefore glorify L in your body and in your spirit, which are L's. So now, do you belong to yourself? So then why do y'all act like y'all belong to yourself? Mine, this is mine, I mine. Mine, 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 mine. That's mine. That belongs to me. I bought that. I purchased that. That's mine. Okay, well, what about you? You're talking about all these items that belong to you, and you yourself don't even belong to you. So do those items actually belong to you? No. That's why you can't take them with you eternally. So then why the hell do y'all try to Uncle Scrooge hoard that shit up? Why do you do it? Because it makes me feel safe and secure. It's only temporarily making you feel that way, because if it leaves you, then you won't feel that way. Yeah, I mean, I know that's right, but as long as it's here, grandson, I'm going to use that as my safety net. Sure. Sure. All right. So as we see, you don't belong to yourself. So then you can't tell yourself what to do. You can't tell yourself what you are. Your identity is hidden with Christ in God. That's what the scripture says. Like Yahushua revealed the identity of Peter. Like Yahushua revealed the identity of James and John. Called them by a new name. The sons of thunder. So what do you guys want to do? Keep playing around or just submit to what the grandson has been telling you all? Well, we'll continue in case you guys don't get it quite yet. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, we'll start at verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. Stop. Stand fast. So if it tells me to stand fast in something, then that literally is telling me that there is going to be something to try to pull me out of it. Well, if Yahusha is liberty, what we just read there, then he was exhibiting that in his walk. Well, who was chasing after him, trying to pull him out of that liberty? The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, the religious leaders, and the elders. Religious folk. 
So then who's going to do it to you? See, who's going to try to pull you out of your freedom? Religious folk, legalistic people that seek to bring you under the bondage of the law. That's the bondage they're seeking to put on you. What else bondage do religious legalistic people put on people other than the law? That's the law of bondage. But we've been made free by our high priest of Melchizedek, not Levitical order. I'm not of the Levitical order. So why, when I preach, do you guys expect me to preach like I'm of the Mosaic order? I'm not. I'm not of their Aaronic order. I'm of the Melchizedek order. I'm a total, di di total different priesthood from a total different tribe. I'm not of Levi. See, I'm not of Levi. I'm of Judah. Don't you see it? And I'm one. So I'm Judah and Ephraim within my own body. I am a unified stick. Well, you just have to ask my mother and my father what bloodlines they descend from, which made me. Because I know. Joseph and Judah made me. Uh-oh, can y'all understand what I just told to you? The two sticks shall become one in your hand, your body. And they are one. So I'm a branch that stands up as an ensign to the people. Oh, man, I don't know. Maybe y'all didn't hear the prophets or something. But anyway, before I get off on a tangent talking about that, because I can all day, let's get back to what we're talking about here. All right. All right. Watch this here. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty with Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Again means you were once. So what was the bondage of yoke that Saul was tangled in before he was set free by Yahushua on that road and became Paul? What was he in bondage to? Y'all know what it was. That's why he's the one saying this because of his experience. Y'all know what it was. So he says, don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Yahushua said, I give you a new yoke, which means a new work. And it's light and easy. So it's not the same work that you were doing under Moses that was heavy and hard to bear. The scriptures makes that clear. But let's continue. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Did you hear that? Where does circumcision come from? It comes from the law of Moses. Moses said already there's going to be another prophet that you need to listen to or you'll die if you don't listen to him. And y'all are still listening to Moses. So then y'all not, if you're listening to Moses, how come you won't do what Moses said? I listen to Moses. I do what Moses said. Um, or how come you're not listening to the prophet he told you to look out for? <laughs> Neanderthal, get up out my face. You just exposed that you're an Edomite cave dweller. Get out my face. Continuing, watch this. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. So what he's saying is if you return back to the bondage of the law, then Christ cannot help you. See, continuing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. See how it's not disconnected, circumcision in the law? Now you're in debt because you did an act of the law. Now you're in debt to do the whole thing. What he's saying it's very clear, isn't it? Christ is become of none effect unto you. So as soon as you return back to the Mosaic law, Christ can help you. Is that what it said? As soon as you start, start using your hands to keep the Mosaic law, Christ can't help you anymore. He's none effect to you. The spiritual mind is none effect to you. You're, going, you're returning back to the carnal mind. Thinking that circumcision is circumcision of the foreskin of the penis. So if you did that, then you did wrong. Because the circumcision true is the circumcision of the heart. Is that true? See? So then what would you circumcise if you were standing before God? Your foreskin on your penis or your foreskin on your heart? You all have to answer my question with one answer like I always tell you you have to, which is you would circumcise your heart. So then why do you all circumcise your penises? Because Moses told you to. Um, I'm going to swing you niggas again. For in Yahushua HaMashiach, verse 6, make sure. No, 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 I went way too far. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ has become of none effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law. See? 
So Christ can't help you if your justification comes from the works of the law. Well, then Christ cannot help you then. Look how simple this is. Well, people say they got Christ. I told you they don't. See? Continuing. Ye are fallen from grace. So the moment you start working with your hands to do it on your own with the, sh the flesh, you are not under grace anymore. You are now under judgment. Mm, mm, mm. Easy to be understood. For we, through the spirit, see how he separates the two kinds? We, through the spirit, see, not fleshly. See how it's so clear? Wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. We with patience wait for it. I told you how people will feel if you're waiting patiently on something. They will say you're lazy. They will call you a sluggard. They will say you don't work. They will say you're not a worker. Can't you understand it? Because they don't see any physical work being done. He says we wait for it by hope. Man, I don't know if you guys can't see that there's a difference between two type of people that say they serve God. See? Continuing. Watch this. For we, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Yahushua HaMashiach, neither circumcision availeth anything. So then if you say, oh, Moses said to circumcise my son. So you go out there and you circumcise your son. And then you come back before God and you say, God, I did what you told me to do. Didn't I do it right? It didn't avail anything. Isn't that what you just read? Or are you too hard-headed to hear that? That's so silly for people to still think they're serving God by doing rudiments and commandments with their work of their hands, even though the Bible says not to and that it's an abomination to try to. They keep trying to do it. Even though I just expose all of your wickedness by saying, if you stood before God and he said, circumcise yourself, what would you do? I know what I'd do, circumcise the foreskin of my heart. But what would you do? Well, Moses said, see, and then Moses is going to say, didn't I tell you to listen to that prophet that would come after me or you would die if you didn't listen to him? Not me, if you didn't listen to him. So then Moses, if, if you're the high priest, you're the leader of the Levitical priesthood. How come you're telling us to look for another prophet and listen to him? If you're the high priest, I told you, because the Levitical priesthood was only meant for the flesh body. It was only meant or only added because of transgressions. So therefore, when you're in the spirit, you no longer transgress. You no longer sin, as the Bible says. So then there's no need for you to have that Mosaic law. Now you need a higher law for a higher existence that you're now living. That's called Melchizedek. Keep telling you that. Why do you think Abraham gave Melchizedek 10% when Levi wasn't even born yet? Swing, 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 swing. So then what priesthood was teaching? And what was that priesthood teaching in Abraham's day before Levi was born? Can you guys tell me? So I'm going to tell you guys, just like Yahushua said about Abraham, I'm going to tell y'all that about Levi. Before Levi was, I am. So then what was the priest of righteousness, Malachisadak, the king of righteousness, the prince of Salem, the king of Salem, what was he teaching? What priest duty did he have? Levi wasn't around yet. So what was Melchizedek doing? What was he teaching? Well, if Abraham gave him 10%, then that means that Abraham accepted Melchizedek's priestly teachings as true. Well, let's see what Abraham did. Brotherly love and hospitality was the mark of Abraham. Lot was Abraham's nephew. And Abraham could have left Lot to, him, to his own devices after the death of his brother. But he took his brother's son in as his own once his brother passed away. Brotherly love. Brotherly love. And then when they came and took Lot and kidnapped him and took all the goods and people of Abraham, Abraham went and took them all back and didn't lose not one of them. Brotherly love. And then when Lot and Abraham's men argued over the land because there was a dispute over the grazing land, they had too many animals. Abraham said, we are brothers and we should not fight or dispute over physical, stupid things. So therefore, you decide which land you want and then I'll decide which side I'm going to go and then we'll go there. And then they did. And when those three angels came to talk to Abraham, he went and he ran and made, told his wife to make them some dinner and to come in and get a load off and eat. 
didn't he do that? So then stop screwing around with me. See? Stop screwing with me. Watch this here. Verse, what we want to make sure we have, let's make sure we're in the right spot. All right. For in Yahusha, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, doesn't matter, but faith which worketh by love. Who that I told you walked into the temple? Peter and John, which is faith and love. That's how that man walked, faith by love. That is Yahusha's way to do a miracle. You use the power that I have taught you all to use in a loving manner on behalf of your brother. You see him walking, you see him standing up and you feel as though he is and he shall, even though he was too weak to do that on his own. That's how you prove you love your neighbor as yourself and you keep in Yahushua's way, which is faith and love with hope. Oh boy, gosh golly, continuing. You did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? So he's speaking to the Galatians. And you know earlier he called them, Oh foolish Galatians who have bewitched you to bring you back. See, there's some people going to those who are free and trying to bring them back into the bondage. Can you deny that when you read this? Now I want to ask all of you, who are you? Are you the one living in liberty? Or are you the one going around trying to catch those who are in liberty and bring them back into bondage? Cinderella slipper time. Go ahead and look down if you happen to have them on your feet. It would be best that you don't. And if you don't, then that means that you're in liberty. Are you? Or are you still under that bondage? Huh? Let's continue and keep on reading here. This persuasion. So somebody's persuading you, or as we call, tempting you. Let's see. This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. So the persuasion to return back to the rudiments of the law and the works of the hands, like circumcision and doing this and doing that and doing what Moses told us to do. Then what does that mean, he says? He says that did not come from Yahusha, the one who called you out of the carnal mind. Why would he call you out of the carnal mind and then tell you to go back to it? He wouldn't. So then why are you? Continuing. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Stop. What did Yahusha say? Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Stop. Who are the Pharisees? The Mosaic Leaders, the over-righteous, legalistic, sitting in Moses' seat, as Yahushua said, as people. So then, I'm not lying to you. People that uphold the Mosaic law are, are attacking Christ and his children. Like they did in Christ's day. The Mosaic law and the Levitical law are fighting against Melchizedek. That's called in-house fighting, and a house divided can't stand. So when is this house going to stop fighting each other, Israel? When is Ephraim and Judah going to stop vexing and harming one the fuck each other? When? Battling back and forth over your God. I'm a better son than you are, Judah. No, I'm a better son than you are, Ephraim. Look how I'm keeping God's ways. Look how clean I am. Look at you, you filthy damn devil. I'm not even going to talk to Samaritans anymore because they're just gross. Don't you know Samaritan is your brother? Oh, I didn't know that because of his outward appearance and how he acts and why he eats that way and why he dresses that way. See what I'm trying to say to you guys? See what I'm trying to say to you guys? A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. So the leaven is a teaching of a carnal-minded religious freak. That's leaven. You hear that? Like Yahushua told you it was. All right. So I have confidence in you through the Lord that you will be none otherwise minded. None otherwise minded than what? What do you think? Spiritually minded. So I hope that y'all don't get no other kind of mind coming up in you but the spiritual mind. See how simple it is. But he that troubleth you. So he's that's trying to draw you back into the carnal mind of rudiments. You shall, you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. See that there? And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, so if I was to go back and say, yes, according to the Mosaic law, we're supposed to circumcise our sons. So if I start to teach people that, you see, because if you're in liberty, people are going to say you're teaching against the commandments. Was Paul accused of that? Yes. Was he Yahusha's? Yes. Was Yahusha accused of that? Yes. Why do you think all the apostles were martyred? 
because they were persecuted by their twin brother. That's why. That's who's killing you. Like Yahushua and the Pharisees. They are brothers. He came unto his own and his own knew him not. So then the house is killing its own damn self. And that's why a house divided can't stand. But Abba already said he's going to remove that shit from you guys. He's already said he is. He's going to be one stick like the grandson told you. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. I would that they were even cut off which trouble you. See? For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. So I wish that the niggas that was trying to bring you back unto Mosaic Covenant, the old covenant, because there's a new covenant, they're trying to bring you back under the old. Well, guess what? I pray that they be cut off from you. They're troubling you. See? You've been called to liberty. Look how, look how he keeps saying it. And see, when, when over-righteous legalistic people hear that, they say, look at Paul the charlatan. Look at him. Telling people to be lawless. Look at Paul. We knew he was a damn devil. No, you're just wrestling with his words to your own damn demise. Just like the scripture says, because you're unlearned. Do you not know that when people read Moses, you want to tell people to read Moses and do what Moses said. Do you not know that there's a veil on the heart of a man when he reads Moses and he cannot understand what Moses is talking about? And that veil that he has on his heart can only be removed, it can only be done away with Christ? So as long as you read Moses and you don't accept what Christ told you, you can't understand what Moses said. That's why I'm telling you why Moses said what he said, proving of the order that I'm from. He didn't say muzzle the unmuzzle the ox because he careth for oxen. A converted person understands that, but an old Torah keeper can't understand it. See what I'm trying to say to you? Like the Pharisees were doing. One of which Paul was, so he knows both sides. He was persecuting those who had liberty like Stephen. It said Stephen's face was as the face of an angel. Who killed Stephen? The Jews did. And Paul was there standing there watching it. Agreeing with his mouth, he said. And I did it wrong. I didn't know I was doing it wrong. So a lot of you don't know you're doing it wrong, but you are. But Abba, by his grace, will lift you out of that if you be willing to submit to him and submit to his son and let his son reteach you so that veil can be removed. Because none of you can deny that you cannot say you have Moses if you don't have Christ. Because if you don't have Christ, the veil on your shit, nigga. Now prove to me it ain't. You can't. But I can prove with scripture that the veil remains unto this day not removed because they refuse to hear what Christ got to say. The higher priesthood of the higher order of the New Testament of his blood. Why would I tell you go back to an old covenant if the New Testament is in the blood of Christ and what he said? Moses was our schoolmaster and you guys just can't get it to bring us unto Christ and you just can't get it. Moses brought the Israelites into a man named Yahusha in the old scripture. And you guys still don't get it. And when he gave them to Joshua, then they crossed over into the world that was meant for them, which is the spiritual mind. Moses couldn't bring them into the spiritual mind. He brings you to the pinnacle of the carnal mind, which prepares you to meet the man that's going to teach you about the spiritual. Isn't this easy to understand it? Mm, 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 mm. Continuing. Watch, watch, little flock. For all, watch this. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Watch. He's going to clarify what he means because, like I said, people are going to say, hey, you're saying don't do anything that Moses said. You're telling them be lawless. Do not keep the commandments. That's what you're saying. Let's read what it says here. But only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. So don't use the freedom that you have to fulfill any lust of the carnal mind. If you're not carnal minded, then you can't sin, my nigga. So then I'm free. I can't sin anyway because I'm not carnally minded. I have liberty now. Can you understand that? Watch this. But only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. Now, all the things that you say I shouldn't do, which is don't commit adultery, love God, don't commit adultery, don't covet, don't steal, don't bear false witness, and so on and so forth. That's what you would tell me to do, right? 
Okay, then. Let's see what this says. That would be fleshly things, right? Coveting, adultery, murdering. That's works of the flesh, right? So then he just told me, don't use my liberty to do that kind of shit. So then am I able to do it because I have liberty? No. So then how the hell am I teaching you to do it because I have liberty? I'm not. See how it going? Same thing Christ tried to explain. Same thing Peter, Paul, and all of them tried to explain. They was beaten, killed for trying to explain it. Continuing. Watch this. But by love, serve one another. Stop. Does it ever change? So instead of fulfilling the lust of my flesh with my liberty, now I have the liberty to serve anybody with love. That's the liberty I now have. I'm free from all of those thoughts about what I should do for me and thinking about if I love others, then I fulfilled it. What I need to do for me. Or as Christ says, seek ye first the kingdom, then the rest shall be added to you. Because God knows what you need. So don't take thought of your life. Take thought for the lives of others. Because love seeks is not its own life. It seeks the welfare of others. See how it's simple? God, golly. Watch this here. For all the law. I don't know why people struggle with this shit. All of it. Does it say the sacrificial law? Does it say the law of circumcision? Does it say the law of adultery? Does it say the law of this, the law of that? It says all of it. Every last bit of the shit is fulfilled in one word. So then what's the, why y'all use more than one word when y'all teach people? Do I, or do I stand on love? Have I stood on love from the beginning? You who are listening to me, do I stand on love? So then how come these other preachers don't? Because they seek to bring you into bondage. That's why, and I seek to make you free. There's a difference. The son of man came not to destroy life, but to save it. Can y'all hear me today? So let's see here. You, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That's what Melchizedek teaches. That's what he teaches. And so that's what Abraham did to those men. He treated them like he would want to be treated. Fed, taken care of, able to get some rest, treated with hospitality and love. He also went through Sodom and Gomorrah looking for some righteous men to be saved before that place would be destroyed. Now here it is. This is a wicked ass city fit to be destroyed. And Abraham is still wants to have mercy and grace on this place and say, Father, you won't destroy it if there's a few righteous men. But he couldn't find any there. But he did look. So that shows his heart. That shows that he cares for others. He doesn't want that place to be destroyed, but it was because they couldn't find any righteous man there. See it? So it shows the state of Abraham's heart. Why is it so hard for y'all to understand that? So the law is fulfilled in one word. So I don't know why y'all just don't use that one word with each other. I don't know. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But... If you bite and devour one another, hey, you're not doing this like the Pharisees. Hey, you're not doing that. Hey, you didn't do this right, brother. Don't you know you're not supposed to have that cloth on? Don't you know you're not supposed to mix that cloth with this particular kind of cloth? Y'all stupid. Y'all think that has something to do with a man heart? Do you really? Do you guys really think that? Does what you eat enter into your spirit? No. But you guys act like it does. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Let's continue, y'all. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. See? Like I told you the servants would start doing. Start hitting on one another and start biting and devouring. I told you that. This I say then. Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Stop. Do what I have told you guys. Is it saying what I've been telling you or not? If you enter the spiritual mind, then you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The law was so that you would not fulfill the lust of your damn flesh. That's why it was put there. Well, he's telling you how to not fulfill it. Walk in the spirit. And if you walk in the spirit, you will fulfill what the law was teaching you to do that you couldn't recognize until you met Christ. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit. What have I told you? The carnal mind fights against the spiritual mind and that's all that's happening. 
and the spirit against the flesh. See, they're wrestling in the womb of Rebecca. See, and these are contrary, the one to the other. There shall be two manner of people in your womb. There are two nations in your womb. Two manner of people, did he say? Two manner, two different types. Two different nations in your womb. And one shall be stronger than the other. That's what we're reading here. The flesh lust against the spirit. Esau fighting against Jacob. And the spirit against the flesh. That's what's happening right now, what I'm doing right now in this video. I am the spirit fighting against the fleshly people that are seeking to uphold Torah the wrong way. I'm teaching you how to fulfill Torah. So we're warring over the minds of men. And I'm going to win. It's that simple. I've already won. I've already won. I would have been torn down by now. Believe me, if you can if you can get through your people, if you're a Jew, a true Jew, a Negro in this world, and you can overcome your people to then go forth and start speaking to other people, then you've already overcome. Because the Negroes is the most stiff-necked, hard-headed, rebellious people on the earth. God said that. So dealing with them, and you think I'm going to deal with you, some Gentile other person outside of my own nation, and it's going to be hard for me to deal with? My people have a forehead like Flint. My people make mean faces and scream and be ready to kill your ass every moment that they get. So if I can overcome them, you think I can't overcome the world out there? Please. Please. Continuing. Watch this. And these are contrary, the one to the other, the two minds, so that you cannot do the things that you would. So when you seek to serve God through the law, you can't serve God, even though you want to. That's what he's telling you, because you're in the carnal mind. That's why you can't. You can't please God when you're in the carnal mind. But if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Can you hear it? Is that a typo? Is that a mistake? If you are in the spirit, you are not under the law. So if I'm in the spirit, am I under the law? I'm asking anybody. Am I under the law if I'm in the spirit? Now, do you bear witness that I am of the spirit or am I not? I want you to say it. Say it. Do I not have the spirit or do I have it? If I have it, then am I under the law? Slice head roll and I'm going to kick that bitch in the lake of fire continuing now the works of the flesh are manifest let's see what the works of the flesh are you Torah keepers which are these adultery stop thou shall not commit adultery isn't it in that which your law states thou shall not commit adultery so then adultery is a work of the flesh right so then if I'm spiritual, will I commit adultery? No. So then will I break God's commandment? No. So then get the fuck out of my way and let me keep on marching like I told you or I'll trample you. Continuing. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry. You should have no other gods. You should have no idols. Is that part of the Ten Commandments you guys always tell me about? I mean, no other gods? Well, it says idolatry is a work of the flesh. So if I'm spiritually minded, will I be in idolatry? No, I will not. So then if I am of the spirit, then am I breaking God's commandments? No, I'm not. Witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness. Thou shall not kill. It says murders. Thou shall not kill. Is that part of the commandments? Well, it says murder is a work of the flesh. But I'm not in the flesh, I'm in the spirit. So can I do works of the flesh if I'm in the spirit? I cannot do it. These two worlds are contrary to one another, nigga. They got enmity. So if I'm in the spirit, I hate murder. I hate adultery. So why are you coming up to me telling me not to do some shit I hate? Revelings and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So if you do works of the flesh, then you're fleshly minded and you cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Simple as the fuck is that. But the fruit of the spirit. See, there's only two I keep telling you about. Love. Thing we keep on talking about. Joy. Peace. Long suffering. Gentleness. Goodness. Faith. Meekness, temperance against such there is no law. So in other words, there is no law telling me I can't be loving. 
There's no law saying thou shall not be joyful. There's no law saying thou shall not be peaceful. There's no law, there's no law saying thou shall not be long suffering. There's no law saying thou shall not be gentle. There's no law saying thou shall not have goodness. There's no law saying thou shall not have faith. There's no law saying thou shall not be meek. There's no law saying that thou shall not be temperate. So then I'm free to be temperate, meek, good, faithful, gentle, long suffering, full of joy, peace, and love. And so that's what I do when I'm in the spirit, because that's the fruit of it. So now, if I'm in the spirit, then I ain't in your world. So I don't listen to no laws of your world, because I'm, I'm not a citizen of your shit. So stop talking to me about laws that rule y'all citizenry. Y'all are in bondage, nigga. No wonder y'all don't understand the law that y'all got to keep. Y'all in bondage to another nation, nigga. I ain't no citizen of that. My citizenship is in heaven. Where your shit at? Nah, you want to hear my law of heaven? Do you want to hear my laws or you want to keep hearing the laws of the land, of the dead, of the flesh? Continuing. Watch this. And they that are Christ. So if you truly belong to Christ, then what have you done? You have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. So that shit dead. So then can I break God's commandments if my flesh is dead? I only can break them if I'm fleshly. If my flesh mind has been crucified with all of its desires, affections, and lusts, then I won't desire the things that it tells me to desire because it's now dead. So then I can't break God's commands anymore. Watch this here. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. Desire means an appetite for vainglory. That's, a, that's one of the seven deadly sins I keep telling you guys about. Let us not desire that shit because it ain't going to do no good. Isn't that easy what it's saying there? All right, then. Go to the book of James. Didn't I tell you guys it was so much food from yesterday? We're still, this is yesterday's dinner we're still eating. Gosh, golly, isn't that amazing? Yeah, I say so. That's why my, my, my device died yesterday. Or otherwise, obviously, we would have had a three-hour message yesterday. James chapter 1, verse 27. Now, we were reading in Isaiah that God says, you guys are doing oblations, you guys are doing new moons, Sabbaths, and all kinds of things, and I don't want you to. I hate it. The shit stank. I don't want y'all doing it. Isn't that what we read? Now, what were the things that he said that he wanted us to do? He said, check on the fatherless. He said, check on the widow. That's what I want you doing. Let the oppressed go free. That's what I want you to do. Is the world doing that? No. So then they don't listen to what God tells them to do. So he don't give a fuck about nothing else you do. Wish y'all understand that. So now that we've discovered Isaiah spoke about what we should do, let's see if it jives with the New Testament. James chapter 1 verse 27. Pure religion, so that means a perfect, undefiled religion, and undefiled, see, before L, love, and the Father is this. So if you want to have a pure religion before the Father, what should you do? Let's see. To visit the fatherless. I'm about to smack everybody, spit out their fucking mouth. I'm tired of this shit. Are y'all so hard-headed y'all can't hear this? Why do you have to hear it numerous times for your heart to respond to it? The fatherless, he says here, and widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world, the flesh, carnal mind, unspotted me, don't touch it, like I told you when he said, don't touch the dead carcass of a swine, don't touch the carnal mind, or you will find that your ass will end up blind. So pure religion and undefiled is to visit the fathers and widows and don't use the carnal mind. That's it. It's the same thing we read in Isaiah. And you guys think, no, that's not what it is. It's everything Moses told us to do. That's what we're supposed to do. It ain't it ain't about this father's widow shit. It ain't what it is. Why I keep telling you that that's what it is. You ain't doing that pissing him off. I told you in the old and the new and I proved it to you, niggas. I proved it to you. All right. Go to James chapter 1. We're going to start at verse 1. We're going to jump back real quick to the beginning of that same chapter. James, a servant of El and the Lord Yahushua Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. So who was James talking to? 12 tribes of Israel. See? 
My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Count it all joy, that's what he said. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting, which means lacking, nothing. If any man of you lack wisdom, let him ask of ale, that give to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. So don't let him think anything if he what? Don't ask in faith. See what I'm telling you? That he won't get nothing if he don't ask in faith. See? Because if you don't do it with faith, you can't please God. Oh, man. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. See? Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich is that he is made low. Because as the flower of the grass, he shall pass away. All right? Go down to 12. Blessed is the man that endured temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that what? Love him. Let no man say that he is tempted. When he is tempted, I am tempted of love, for love cannot be tempted with evil. So if you're love, one with the Father, can you be tempted? No. So then if you keep the word of his patience during the hour of temptation, then will you be saved? Yep, like I told you. See? For God cannot be tempted. Love cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust, carnal mind, and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, when she has a thought that you've given her and you've accepted that thought as true, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. The carnal mind is death. So do you see how the carnal mind works? It entices you. And then when you receive the enticement, the temptation is true. Then you become one with it. And that is sin. And then as you're going along one with that sin, you end up dying. That's the way the carnal mind is because the carnal mind is death. But the spiritual mind is life and peace. Do not err, my beloved brothers. Every good gift, every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. All right. What do I want? Okay. Go down to um, 25. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty... So if you will be perfect, did you hear what Christ was saying? If you will be perfect, I've kept all the Mosaic commands. Okay, now if you will be perfect, see, that's the law of liberty. And continue with therein, so I'm called out of the bondage of the law into the law of liberty that Christ gave me. And if I remain in that and don't get enticed out of it, like he said you could be, he being not a forgetful hearer of what Yahushua said, but a doer of what Yahushua said, a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his doing, in his deed. See what he done. See it? So what did he do? He looked into the perfect law and continued in it. That's what the work he was that he did. Just told you. If any man among you seem to be religious, uh huh, and bridleth not his tongue, so that means that this nigga can't help but lie and deceive when he talks. See? That's the mark of the carnal minds, not anything else. It is lying. I made a post about it, and all praise to the Most High. You guys was getting that answer right like a mug. Y'all was like, lies mean that nigga talking to you. The Bible say he the father of lies, and when he speak, he speaketh a lie. That's what it say. <laughs> you see, little flock? You're not a forgetful hearer of it. See? You know it. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, can't help but lie. See? But deceiveth. See? I told you that's what it is. Niggas want to try to lie to me. Talking about bridling your tongue mean you talk like this and you don't cuss and you speak eloquent and you don't raise your voice and you do this and a do a that tap dance move and then do a shimmy over here and spin to the side and then you dip into the ocean and fly up like a dolphin and click your heels as you spin around and then you slide into home base like you're Derek Jeter on the New York fucking Yankees. What the fuck? They didn't say none of that shit. It says, he deceiveth his own heart. 
This man's religion is vain. It ain't profitable. See? See it? Pure religion undefiled. We just read what it is. It's to visit the fatherless and the widows, man. Same thing we read before. See that there? How come it didn't say pure religion and then it lists 613 things to do this and 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 do this I'm so full of holes because of the do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do machine gun you were shooting at me. I can't even do anything, let alone the commandments. I'm dead as hell. That's how the Pharisees make you feel. Laying there full of holes because all the stones they threw at you. Do this and 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 but did y'all hear and understand what the grandson is breaking down for you here that you've been made free from the carnal mind? So when people try to tell you carnal things to do, you just can't accept it. Your mind can't receive it because it's spiritual. So then when you hear anything, when you do anything, you are simply leaning into the spiritual mind to tell you. That's why it says to the pure, all things are pure. So that means I'm standing next to a fleshly minded man. Now we see something in front of us, a beautiful woman. Now when he sees her, he starts to lust after her in his heart. When I see her, I simply say, wow, she's a beautiful, attractive woman. Go on with my day. So we're both thinking she's beautiful and attractive, but that's causing us to feel in our hearts two totally different things. And that's why Yahushua focused the man on his heart and said, when you commit adultery in your heart, you sin." Can y'all hear that little flock of litters? What he what? It ain't hard. As a matter of fact, it's real easy. Like, so I'll be blessed today, little flock of litters. Still a one, Mr. Dialogue.